All right, I'm um, going to put a little bit of this yellow on the clouds, just here and there, because it would maybe be a reflection of the sun, right? I don't know. I'm not a professional reflection artist, but I love it. I love bringing all these colors. Oh, man, it's just fun for me. I think it's great right here. Um, all right. So you get the idea. You can kind of see things are coming to the forefront and the background, right? So on the house, I'm definitely going to go, let's do, um, I'll do the house and the trees a little bit because here's the thing on the trees. I like to make a little, can you see what I'm doing? I'm going to zoom in a little. Right here. I make these little, and I did do it on the drawings originally, so I'm going to shade behind some of these lines and it makes it more dimensional. So I'll show you what I mean by that real quick. Uh, and then I'll put like one random thing in there. And I'll do the same thing with the bushes, but I'll show you on the tree. What do I want to do on here? Um, all right, everything on there is pretty good. And the same thing with the clouds. I will, I mean, you don't have to shade anymore because we've already, but I like to add these little, am I in the shot? Little shading areas that just give it a little more dimension. So I'll show you what I mean. And you can do it or not do it. It's up to you. I like it though. All right, and I'm going to use Payne's Gray on the clouds. I'm going to use black green on the, um, you know what I want to do? This is just bugging me. I'm going to take this yellow and I'm going to just make this uh, window. I always do my windows yellow and I will shade that too so it won't look as bright. And I'll leave a little white line around it. All right, um, kind of lost some of my, I'll pop these, like some of the shading gets on the flowers and stuff, so you kind of lose it, but all right, here's what I'm going to do for taking my small angle brush. I'm going to grab that black green and just put it in a few areas on the tree, trunk, tree, no, the tree, tree. Here, look, watch this. This is a great one. You go up the tree trunk on the on the green and go under here and the same thing over here and over to here and now he looks like he's you know and then wherever I have these lines I'm gonna go behind it not on the front part because I could highlight the other parts I'll show you and you don't have to do it everywhere like you don't have to have one on every curve that you do but it definitely adds uh, dimension to your tray see oops I think I have a big water drop right there um, so that little this round one here I did I have to go all the way around it with the green so I'll show you there's a right here so I'm going to take the point and put it down on the arch of the curve so not on the inside and it makes it look like it is popping out of there gives it a little dimension there's one here uh, I'm going to do this one here there's one over here and all of a sudden now my tree looks fluffy right and I'm going to put highlights on the opposite side. So I'll come back and show you that. I'm going to finish up all the shading everywhere. And then I'll come back and do some highlights. Okay. For the stepping stones. Now this time on the stone. We're going to do the opposite thing. I'm going to go in with the Payne's Gray. And on a corner loaded brush. I'm floating this. Do the opposite. On the stone this time. Go around the opposite edge. So... I'm upside down, so this would be the right edge along the bottom. So do all your stones the right edge along the bottom. The little one was hard. 
I should have started at the top and worked my, um, start at the bottom actually, because then you won't pull off the stone above it with the brush if it touches. So I'm going to go For some reason, I am not getting a good... Alright, let's do it this way. Maybe I want to pull it from the other side. That might be what I want to do. I already did that one. And then I leave the paint over here. When we outline it, it'll even make it more clear and pop even better. Like, that's just too much. Too much, Sarah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Take a Q-tip. Wipe it off. Get my brush um, blot. It, it was too wet, so I couldn't get it to... Okay, this looks kind of perfect. Whatever's happening on your... Um, paper palette is going to happen over here. I want to fix this uh, black green area. Ta -da! Okay. So it might not look, okay, then the other thing around these guys, I want to go up against the door. So on the gray, with the Payne's Gray, the dark color, I'm just going to put a little bit of that up against the door, so I'll show you what I mean. The color is going up against the door on the gray bricks. So we're going to do that all the way around the door. Um, now I'm starting to get into the details. I want to take the color. I shaded the trees up under here and on, on the top and bottom down the left side. So let me go down the left side. I'm using a color called Asphaltum. And it's just a dark brown. It's like a chocolatey, poopy brown. It's poopy. I'm going to go up against the left side of the tree. And I already did... Um, the left side of the door, but I'll go along the bottom of the door. And I want to put a little bit of this on my window too, just around the left bottom edge. I already did those trees. Um, okay, it's starting to come together. Now I want to, I'm going to do a little, I'm going to grab my like detail liner. This is a 10 slash 0 and white going to make some, like, see, I'm going to pull this over here and kind of into a clean area and just water it down a little bit so I can make a, um, I want to make like a scallop on the edge of the roof because just to bring some white, even though that white is super faded, it's nice to have like bright details. Where is it? Oh, I lost it. it is what it is, right? Um, because I want to put, I'm going to put my chimney back on too. I, I didn't paint on my chimney. Uh, I could outline the door. I kind of want to outline the door too with white. I want to do that. And you know what? You can use your Posca paint pens. But it's just as easy to do it with a brush. If you have the paint nice and wet and it, it'll um, move for you. And I haven't shaded the roof yet but I wanted to show you what I'm going to do with that. I need to shade my um, house. Pretty much the house is the last thing I have to do. Oh, I want to highlight the trees. Should I use yellow? Let's see what the yellow looks like but I may just um, go in with um, 
a mixture of like green and white to do it, but I think let's try the yellow first. And if it shows up, we might be good to go. So I have a little yellow and I'm doing, this is all with the side load the way I like to do it. So I'm going to put it on all the kind of the fluffy parts. Does that look brighter? Yeah, I think it is. I could always add white to it too to really make it lighter. But let's just try it with this first and see if it shows up enough. I think it's showing up pretty good. I mean, it might it might dry less bright. I'm just going to hit the background trees a little bit too. I think I can see that, the brightness of it. Uh, definitely helped that guy a lot. He was looking really dark back there, so that actually really popped him out. And I already did it on the um, grass, but I think I want to do this. I'm running out uh, right under here a little more. And definitely under the house a little more. I lost it. That worked. I think the yellow was good. And now you can add in your metallics too. <clears throat> I haven't added any metallics, huh? You know what I'm gonna do? <coughs> there goes my voice again. The white pearl. This is Martha Stewart, but they come in other brands too. I'm gonna put some of that on my clouds and maybe it'll make them a little brighter because they definitely got dulled down. Uh, so I'm doing the same technique, just a corner load of white, and I'm just going to go over some of these areas of the cloud. I have a lot of water on my brush. It's because I use this big brush that I love. And just put some of that white back in there. Oh, it's pearly. It's so pretty. You can really do it over the colors too because it'll the colors will still shine through. So anywhere is good really. That's awesome. See that's where it starts to come to life. Um, do I want to do that on my trees? I have green. Ooh, I'll show you what a green metallic would look like. So I have this green, Craft Smart Green Metallic. And now I'll show you the difference between uh, flat paint and metallic paint. All right, so I'm same thing. I'm gonna go back and do a little highlighting with this on my tree and see what happens. You may only see this at when it's like in a certain direction. Um, I mean, when the book is kind of at an angle or something, but we know it's there, right? Let's see. I don't think it's popping like some, like it could pop, but I know it's there. I'm going to put it on my back trees too a little bit. I think this makes all the difference for some reason. It just really happy. What could I use on my door? Maybe the white. I'm going to highlight my door just on the, um, what is this, the right side with white pearl. And you know what, I want to put, I'm going to put gold on my bricks. Uh, let's shade the roof. So for that I'm going to use a dark like a mendicino wine it's like a burgundy color and I'm gonna shade up against the scallops and down the left side let's do that 
I'm using my little brush because I don't want to put too much paint and this keeps me from doing that because if I have a big brush boy I can put a lot of paint so first thing I want to do is up against these scallops so I'm just going to put the paint up against the, the white and see I have so much water on here I know I can get all the way across here and if you don't just reload your brush and come in each time but I know I can do it and look at that I love it you know what I'm gonna do we're gonna go back to our flowers and brighten them back up because they got lost in the shading I'm gonna put a little and it should be sheer I should have mm, I didn't um, add gel medium to this so it's not I don't know I kind of like it let's just go with it it's what's happening right and there I actually got a little white in my brush so now that's coming out a little like, like I could probably put another big flower here but I'm gonna leave it let's pop that yellow again too the centers of my flowers kind of got a little bit muddied down from the uh, shading and kind of lost my leaves too so I'm going to bring them back there's a leaf here oh yeah I like that go bright that's good this is just the straight green that we use but it's full strength I like it I'm going to outline that with um, my black pens you know what else I want to use a little bit of blue on my stepping stones just a sheer float well you know it'll be sheer when it's a float just add that into my stepping stones too it's reflection I guess or I don't know I just like it what else the roof we're going back to the roof with that burgundy color Mendocino wine. Too much water. I got a blot. And we're going to go down this side. So I just stick the paint up against. And because it's a, a rounded roof, I could probably do both sides. But you know what we'll do? We'll go up against the window instead. Maybe all the way around the window. I don't know, it might make it look like it's it is awfully quiet considering everyone's home. Uh, see I just took off some of the paint that I did right there. That's the, the thing, the paint where patience comes in. You have to kind of wait for things to dry. So I I picked up paint right there, but I'll add it back in. We have to do a little highlighting on the bricks. So I'm going to take that brush, and what color should I use? I want to use like the gray with a little white mixed in, I think. All right, so I'm going to do gray with the pearl white. Let's see what that does. And put that on the edges of these bricks. I think I have to do that on top of my stepping stones too because it's freaking cool. Let's see. Gray. It's like a lichen gray. It's more of a brown gray. I can get a lot of metallic. And the house. So for the house, we're going to go under. Actually, I should wait because the what I just did to the stones here is still wet. And if I go right across that, I could pick it up. I'm going to try and go back in with some of that Mendocino wine and just fix this little section. 
And you know what we'll do? We'll put in our hearts. I forgot about the hearts, right? So let's just do a bright pink, couple of bright pink hearts uh, hanging down in the sky. So the further back ones might be a little smaller. Doesn't really matter. Am I in the shot? Yes. Um, so I'm going to go away and paint these. And that's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, I put, we're in the home stretch. I put the chimney on, and I just used the gray color. So I'm going to highlight and shade that in a minute, but I want to do the house. So we're going to do shade under the roof and along the bottom. So I'm going to get my angle brush with some Payne's Gray. Um, it's... It's, I keep, it says gray, but it is not actually a gray color. It's like a dark blue. And we're going to go up against the roof. So on the blue, you just put the color up against that little scallop that we made. And I'm running out of paint, so I'm going to reload. I didn't have enough water on there. My paint's getting a little dried out on the palette, so that's better. Go back under and across. All the bristles on the surface, you need the paint and the water on the surface. So don't pick up the, the end of your brush. So that's good, right? I don't know why it looks like a line over there. Uh, go along the bottom. I'm just going to put out a little more because um, <clears throat> it's all dried up. Uh, I need more paint. So yeah, we're in the home stretch. I'm going to do, I'm going to shade the little hearts and the flowers. And then I'm going to outline everything with black. And you'll see how it just makes everything start to pop. That is so much paint. See how I'm a heavy hand? And this is something that you'll go back and forth with when you learn this technique. You have to be consistent, very consistent when you load your brush. You have to have whatever's happening on your um, oops, I hear people. Whatever's happening on the paper palette is going to happen on your piece. And then I'm going to go around the bricks, but I want to let that dry. So first we have to shade the hearts and hi my shade the hearts and the flowers so back into that burgundy color and on the left side of all these hearts just put a little burgundy what do I have? Oh, one more over here and then on close to the center of the petals a little bit and it makes them come to life And I'm, I'll probably highlight a little bit too. I could even put some um, of that asphaltum color on the yellow centers to give that. You can close the door, my, if you go out, okay? And looking good. I think on the little leaves, I want to put some black green. I don't know. Oh, that's the wrong color. black green very little water because that way I have more control but I want to go along the bottom of these leaves and when I outline them they'll, they'll show up um, I want to shade my little um, chimney. I'm going to go under the little cap and up against the house. Probably could have used black green. I could have used either color. And probably down this left side. And when you outline it, it'll come to life. So we're good. I think we're good. I just want to go around those bricks. And maybe, hey, you know what? 
let's put a little bit of the brown on the centers of the flower centers just a little like right here right here and we're good I think I'm gonna outline I'm gonna do around the um I can do around the bricks right now so Payne's gray which is the blue it's a dark dark blue I'll stick it up against Oh, you know what? One of the details that I love to do, I'll show you. On the house, I like to make these little brick lines. So, is that wet? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna dry it and I'll outline some stuff and I'll come back and I'll show you this cool thing I like to do on the house. I'm just <clears throat> finishing up my line work and I'm using the dip pen this is just India ink on a scripty um, it's I think it was a um, sketching set that I have um, this particular nib is the longest nib and I actually just can use it some of the nibs didn't work for me as well so that's pretty much it and the and the ink is so black and when it starts to fade out um, it isn't as black so sometimes I'll go back where I might have missed a spot and it kind of bleeds out in some areas and stuff so it's kind of not as neat as maybe the other option would be uh, I love this pen this is my new go-to for mixed media the uniball vision so it's up to you now the other thing I wanted to show you and I don't have a lot of room on this house but I am gonna do it and I don't want to touch where I just did this is probably drier up here so I'm gonna make some actually I'll do it on paper so you can see what I'm doing I'm gonna do brick lines just here and there like even like that it doesn't have to be a ton of bricks literally <laughs> that's funny just like lines like that to just give the illusion that there's bricks I just like it I think it's a cool little addition so I'm gonna gently I'm gonna load my pen and gently try not to smudge anything Put a couple of lines here and there and I just like the way it looks and then actually I'll put one up against here Kirby's here. Hi, Kirby. And I might have went a little crazy. I don't know. I think I need something up here. Um, then, and I just put that in the water. Oh, well. I like to, now that's very wet, but I like to make a few bricks, like come back with my little spotter, my little detaily brush, and put just the straight blue color in there add a little water this has been on my palette for a while and I hope I don't mess this up because I'm being impatient I did stuck it right in the ink and that's it I just think it adds a little pizzazz got that right in the ink but I love it. All right, you guys, that's it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go spray it with the fixative. 
and then I'm going to come back and add stickles and different stuff like that. But this way I won't smudge anything that I've already done and I can add, oops, you know what, I forgot one flower. So yeah, let me show you basically what I do with the dip pen. I like calling it a dip pen because you do dip it. So, and this is the Higgins Calligraphy Waterproof Black Ink. Oops, stuck my fingers in it. But I forgot this little flower over here. So, oh Lord. I just and because the background has texture you're gonna bump a little and um, jump jump and bump and that's what it looks like I like it I think it turned out so cute all right yeah glad I saw that but then after we um, uh, add the fixative, we can come back in with like um, pit pens or other different things to add highlights and different stuff and sketchy stuff and I'll sign my name. I should sign my name. I'm going to sign my name and then I'm going to spray the fixative and then I'll be right back. All right, for the final steps, I just sprayed these with the fixative. But look, my glitter is still glittery. So I'm very happy about that. It didn't dull down. Maybe it dulled down the um, glossy accents a little bit, but I'm very glad because it definitely seals the the um, work. Um, last thing I do is I just take, I like this. This is Icicle Crystal. Where's my other one? Probably on my desk and I can't see it, but I like the smaller glitter ones. I put them on all my, oh, see, this is so big. It's too chunky. I'm going to use, I'm going to find it. Um, I also could put a little gloss. Let's do yellow on the um, centers, the flower centers. How about on the window? Why not? Just put glitter on the window. Did you say that? I just say have it on the window thing. Okay. Um, I wish I could find my little one. My, do you see it on my desk anywhere? My uh, stickles. What color? My are desk. It's just like looks exactly like this. Okay. Okay. Okay for it. Thank you. I'm just gonna use this. It's called diamond, but it's a smaller. Uh, a it has diamonds in there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They just name it. A blingy name. Let her out for me. And I just put a little bit on my hearts. And it just makes them shine and sparkle. And this takes a few minutes to dry. I actually added another bush over on the edge here. Yeah, right here, because it just didn't, it seemed empty there. I'm just, you know, crazy like that. Right, Maya? Yep. Um, and that's it. Add anything else. Oh, I was saying, like, if you have pasta paint pens, you could add highlights to things. Um, I'm not really thinking, I mean, I, I could do, say, like, a white highlight on my little flowers a couple places. But it doesn't need it. Maybe a little something on your, a little shine on those, a couple of the bricks. Um, even if you wanted to fill in, maybe on the doorknob. Like right here, I lost the white kind I got. I'm just going to fill that in a little bit. Uh... I think it looks adorable. I really love this design. Like, I could just paint this a million times. It's just so fun to paint. Um, put little lines in your grass. All right, you guys, give it a try. Altering composition books is so fun. <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks for watching. All right, I just wanted to come back and do a little close-up because I don't do a picture after the piece like I should, but basically I love how the 
the pink and the yellow turned orange in here. I just want you like you can see the cross hatching lines. Um, yeah, I have people in here with me. I ended up putting lines on the door, like little wood lines on the door and wood lines on the tree. Um, but look, the stamping that we did, the little flowers are right there. Uh, the spatter is still showing. Look at the cross hatching in the tree and the swirl in the tree. Um, here's the bricks. I showed you that. Um, yeah, but I see, I just love how all the background shows through. Matt, be quiet. And that little swirl there. So that's the idea behind this, the sheer painting on top so that your background can show through. All right, I, I just wanted to show you that. But when you look at it from far away, it just looks like the design. It looks like what we want it to look like. But when you get close in on it, there's a lot more going on. All right, that's it, you guys. Thanks for watching.